Okay. All right. So today I'm going to be editing a job which was shot entirely without a flash. I did that in order to fully and kind of uh, just accurately portray what it looked like to be there. This event is held at a furniture store, which is um, definitely has a lot of character. It's like 60s inspired British furniture. And you guys will get to see that. Um, so yeah, I wanted to really show what it was like because these events are thrown in order to kind of promote the store. So they collaborate with liquor brands and other uh, sponsors. And so it's very much important to show what the environment was like, to show the furniture, you know, photographs of people without any product or furniture at all weren't going to be very helpful to them. I'm not going to say I would, I avoided it at all cost because I think here and there just getting a great candid moment, even if I can't show space where it was, would be okay. But again, this was very much shot with specific intention. It was shot with the end use in mind. So that's all I have to say right now. I will check comments here and there, but I actually am creating a selection of images for future content that I will publish. And so I want to get it done. So I will focus quite a bit um, on actually doing my work, which usually and I end up answering questions because I really like engaging with you guys. And I do encourage you to ask questions if you have any or just talk amongst yourselves if you're watching live and all that. All right, I'm going to get started and I will check in in a bit to see if anyone has a comment. Also apologize for the noise. They're doing some sort of construction and woke me up at like 6 a.m. this morning. And my computer froze. <laughs> I get two minutes in and my computer froze. I'm very eagerly waiting to get my new computer. Okay, we're back in business. I was actually just messing with this guy because he wasn't supposed to smile, I think. <laughs> so I got right in his face. There's me.
So if anyone's curious, this is kind of like my standard event photography outfit. Um, it's an untucked dress shirt, so designed to be untucked. And nice jeans, usually nice black jeans. That would be like my more casual um, event photography get up. Generally, when I'm shooting, I was shooting with two camera bodies. And when I was shooting with my 5D Mark III, typically I had a wide angle on it. So something like my 17 to 40. And I was shooting with as much depth as I could get with the lighting conditions I had available. So in other words, I didn't really want to crank my ISO over 3200. And I kind of know what my handheld limits are. Um, and that camera doesn't have stabilization, which means my lenses were mostly unstabilized. Um, so I pushed those limits um, and then would add as high an aperture as I could go, as high an f-stop number as I could. And with my R6, I was mostly shooting those close-up shots. With my 50 millimeter, pretty often at 1.2, and then opening it up or closing my aperture down a bit when I needed more depth, but mostly I was shooting at 1.2. So not the most interesting type of shot to me, but this is like kind of the shots they wanted. Shots like this, people interacting with the food, looking at furniture. This was cool. It was it was basically like a capsule. Price available upon request. I almost asked.
Uh, one thing to note to anyone watching, when I an event heavily lit, lit by LED lights, I will shoot a little bit more than usual. I'll shoot a little bit looser, meaning I'll maybe get a larger burst, like a shot. I mean, instead of just one shot of the moment as I see it, I'll like go ahead and shoot three really quickly. Um, and that would be because LED lights do flicker. And you can see the difference between like these two images, for example, um, where the LED, li the lighting on this gentleman is just a bit different. My exposure is exactly the same, but the lights changed.
These are good examples of where, where I'm really pushing the limits of what I can do with a unstabilized lens and shooting with available light and also only being able to open up to f2.8. But honestly, like, this will look fine on a website, it will look fine on Instagram. Yes, it is grainy, and I don't bother with, like, removing grain, by the way, pixelation, um, or noise, I mean. I don't really bother. Sometimes, rarely. If I'm really pushing the limits, maybe. But I'm comfortable shooting ISO 3200 and not really applying anything. I'll have to compare these again later. Capturing the moment over technical perfection. Always. This one's better. There you can see a good example of that LED flicker. My neighbor's music is so loud, I'm going to get demonetized. <laughs> he never really bothers me. There's me, right there. I'm okay with me being in the shot. So, I've talked about it before. Um, I forget if you guys can see it. Yeah, you can't see it, but I actually filter any shots if I ever take a shot of myself. I filter that out or any shot I don't plan on delivering but don't want to delete um, I mark with the yellow label and that's how I know not to deliver it
Don't love any of these. So by the way, um, I posted a new video yesterday. It wasn't a planned one, but it's up. It was originally a Patreon only video, but I decided to go ahead and publish it. And I'm just gonna push back my next new video until Wednesday, I think. But if you're not, if you don't have the bell clicked, I would do that if you wanna be alerted.
Okay, so that was my first round where I basically go and mark anything that I find is a, is a strong image and would contribute to a strong collection of images. I mark that with a red label, then I go back, and now I'm going to narrow it down a little bit more and use a different rating system for portfolio use, YouTube content use, etc. Um, more or less, I'll just end up giving the good images a three, like above average maybe. Um, four or a five would be, four is considerable, like I will consider it for my portfolio, but I will definitely use it on social media. And a five is a like slam dunk portfolio image. Um, but I rarely get around to updating my portfolio. I just don't have that much time. But I will also, while I go through the, these again, now that I've had some distance between the job and my edit, I can kind of see if there's any little things I want to improve upon at all. Um, mostly, I think they looked pretty good. There were a few shots where I felt like the color balance was a little off. Um, some I tried to fix when I did my actual edit. Um, and I wasn't really able to get what I was looking for, and I had to move on because in delivering in a timely ma manner is really important too. I'm going to crop that one.
Hey, Fernando. Um, I don't know what that symbol is, an L? I mean, um, I think you mean tab um, in order to see my settings. So I can't do that. And the reason is, is that with OBS on Mac, it's a pain. You can't really, I haven't figured out a way, and my understanding is you just can't, but you can't really display all of Lightroom. The only way I can do that is if I full, I display everything on my screen, um, which means you'll see everything. If I tab out, anything like that, and I can't do that right now. So it's an issue with Mac. Um, I don't love it. What I used to do is I would full screen, and then I would read comments on my laptop, which I busted. <laughs> And um, so now if I need to read a comment, I have to tab out, and then it would be very, very disorienting. And that's why I don't do it. So I know that would be helpful. I totally get it. Um, but just ask me if there's anything, any question you have. And then the Dawn, thanks for sharing. Yeah, you got it. Um, so anyone just joining, I'm almost through. So I already marked with the red label everything that stood out, everything I felt would contribute to a nice collection of images. Then after that, I go through it and I use a star rating system, which I'm doing right now. I kind of narrow it more down from like the, this selection because I, I don't, right now I have 152 selected and that's too much for anything really. Um, unless I were doing like a highlight gallery, that would be different, but I, I don't really do that. And one thing I do when um, for potential clients, I show them full jobs. I want them to know exactly what they're getting. Um, although I've been curious about potentially doing like more selection stuff, that could bite you in the ass too. Like, yes, you'll only show the best job, but if you're not getting... but. It, that's fine, I think, if you give an accurate representation of the collection of images. So, for example, make sure you include a little bit of everything. You're establishing shots, close-up candids, detail shots, people interacting with branding, that kind of thing. So right now, yeah, I'm doing stars. A three means it's a... a I'm just calling, for my own rating system, a three means like, okay, it's better than the average image. A little bit better. Um, it's, or it's something I just wouldn't want to miss in the collection if I put a collection together, that kind of thing. A four is social media or possibly portfolio worthy, and a five is like a definite image for my portfolio. And then once in a while, I will also use the pick filter um, label tool. So maybe I get this down further and I'm working on some YouTube content and I want to show this job and then, but I really only feel like I have room for about 10 images, that kind of thing. And so maybe I'll, I'll use the pick tool. So I have a tip for getting images like these. It's one I've given for wedding photographers, to wedding photographers or anyone shooting formals and want that wants a more candid look. And that is simply, I've mentioned my tip of having people look at each other. You, you just say to like the groom and his best man after you get all the formals, oh, let me get a shot of you guys looking at each other. They bust up laughing. Here, if I have a large group, one tip that works really well is you say, talk amongst yourselves and they just like have so much fun with it and uh, they really, you know, yuck it up a bit. It's great. So no, I did not happen upon them like this, even though I, I will recognize those moments and look for them. Um, this shot was somewhat encouraged.
I'm gonna crop that in a bit. This one too. Now I'll filter down to my three stars and higher. I got it down to 91. And because I, I'm proud of the work I did here, but none of them were right. Like just because of, I know what's on my portfolio. I know what I would want to update if anything. Nothing stood out super well, like where I'm like, I've got to add that. So I didn't do too many four or five stars, um, but I definitely think I, a lot of these would look good on social media. Christopher, are these still raw or have you touched them up? I do very minimal processing. They've already, they've been delivered as you're seeing them. But when I make a selection for my portfolio, social media, etc., I will consider additional edits. And a purple spy, I'm nowhere near professional, only having only started taking pictures regularly and studying very recently. But this capturing candid moments of event and people was my favorite form of photography. Mine too. And you know, when I started as a photographer, I shot weddings because it was easy to get into. And at the time, the trends were just atrocious. And even though I wasn't heavily or hadn't been involved in the industry for very long, I, I couldn't stand it. And I always believed in just capturing these defining moments. But the industry wasn't there yet. Eventually, though, it did transition and I believe wedding photography is definitely a, a bit more looser documentarian style that comes and goes as far as that style goes. Like uh, I recall even back then kind of like a, a sub trend was the documentarian approach, but it was mostly those very cheesy, cheesy portraits. I think in the early 2000 or late, whatever we're calling like 2008-ish, we weren't doing the cheesy 80s poses, but we were just doing an updated version of it. And so at the time, everyone thought they were doing like very something very modern. Yes, it was modern <laughs> at the time, but I saw it for what it was. It was cheesy, like all the groomsmen holding the bride up horizontally, that kind of thing. Um, and they were worse. That was not the worst of it. Some were pretty benign, <laughs> like all the guys jumping in the air. That's fine. Um, but that's what it was about back then. So a purple spy continued. Even before I understood what kind of photography there were, I just found your channel last week, and it's been genuinely some of the most useful, useful content I found on the platform so far. I really appreciate you watching. I'm glad you found me. Really like that one. Let's 
So what I'm going to do actually, before I export, so just to kind of further explain what I'm doing, um, I actually have a, so what I'll do is I then export each of these into a folder in which I basically, it's a folder for portfolios and stuff like that. So, um, so I got distracted. So what I'll do is I do one sized full res, one sized for social media, one folder sized for my portfolio, etc. And I do this in part like, yes, as long as I have the raw files, I can always do this as needed and I can thoroughly label everything. But I like the idea of having JPEGs exported somewhere. Um, in case something crashes, that kind of thing. I don't want to have to re-edit my RAWs, in other words. Of course, the best practice is to, you know, have backs, backups of everything. Okay. So, back to work. Yep. <laughs> it's a tough one. Oh, um, I, I want to get some feedback for upcoming content from anyone watching, if you would help me. Um, and then I'm going to catch up on comments. There's not a lot of you watching, unfortunately, but that's okay. So um, I have a few videos lined up. And I would love to hear what you're most excited about. So one, is event photography right for you? These might be working titles. Two, should event photographers work for free? My rule of thumb. Um, what else do we have? And then I have one I'm not sure. I, I, th I might refilm it, but it's the career path of an event photographer. I really want to... Actually, no, that one is good to go. Um, that will get published. So that one kind of goes through the early, mid, and late stages of event photography. There really isn't a template available to anyone, um, and people are just left to figure it out like I had to, and so I'm trying to give people more of a template by kind of conveying what my experience was like. So again, I have, is event photography right for you? Should event photographers work for free? My rule of thumb and the career path of an event photographer. I'd love to hear what you guys are looking forward to, and I might kind of bump it up ahead um, and publish it sooner. Okay, um, a purple spy. I'm a big nerd. I've always loved conventions because it's a chance to be in an atmosphere with people that share my interests. My interests. 
My hope is to capture that energy for people to see or look back on. Yep, that'd be great. What do you what do you do for social media export exactly? Okay, I'll answer that. Is it just a specific JPEG resolution? And I assume it just helps them not get compressed. Right now, most of my keepers are just ending up there. Okay, that's a good question. So the export settings you want, I'll actually write it out for you. So JPEG, of course, and you want it at 20 by 48 pixels um, by length. So the long end in Lightroom has a setting where you can select the long, oh, and 72. P, uh, here, I'm going to show you guys. Uh, I'm not 100% sure it's going to pop up when I do it in Lightroom. But when I hit export, um, right here, resize to fit, long edge, 2048, resolution 72 pixels per inch. That's what you'll want. And yes, you don't want them to compress. Like early Facebook days were just beyond belief bad. And I still think they are, but for whatever reason, Instagram seems to do better if you, if they do need to resize it for you. I'm personally most excited to share the career path of an event photographer, but I feel like I put a lot of work into that one and I have a bad habit of like then not trying to maximize my thumbnails and titles and that kind of thing and I want it to succeed because I really believe it will be helpful to people but uh, so yeah but um, we'll see how it goes side.
Okay, so I actually went back and forth because I sometimes adjust my own rating system and I'm still trying to tweak it to make to allow me to be as productive as possible. Um, so I ended up doing four stars. <laughs> second guessed it. Four stars for like my picks, even though I didn't I didn't know if I strongly felt some of them were four stars. I knew they'd be a good selection for like the upcoming content I'm I'm gonna make and for social media. But I think I'm gonna actually just use my pick mode, um, mark them as a pick, and then uh, maybe reconsider later um, if I want to mark them with a four star or higher later. So here's all my picks. So since you can't see what I did, I just bumped the contrast and sharpened it a bit more. You know, detail shots like that generally can handle that. Okay. So I'll start my export. Um, if anyone has a question, I'll answer. If not, in about uh, 30 seconds or so, I'll just end the stream. Um, but yeah, I'll answer any questions anyone has. Um, and then uh, one thing I'll add is uh, you can't see it on the side right now, but I really like that Lightroom now lets you label your folders. So what I've been doing for my labels would be I have a label for do not share, meaning the client did a full buyout and I don't have the copyright, that kind of thing. I have one for... Um, Labeled red means I need to address it, meaning I need to do what I just did in this gallery. Green means I've done my export, so they're now in that kind of, um, those folders I've created for social media, etc. So step one would be my large high-res gallery. then my social media one, and then one for portfolio, if there is one, would have a smaller size actually than my social media size. And the reason for that is one of the ways Google will rank your page, it's not one of the largest ways, like it's not one of the most important, 
but one will be how fast your page loads. So if you post a bunch of full res photos on your website because you think they'll look better and it's sound, that's not a good sign for Google. It affects user experience. So that can hurt your ranking. I did notice when I improved the speed of my site, my ranking did go up. It was one of the many things I had to do to get my ranking to go up. I think this was the 14th. I forgot what date I shot this job. I'll have to check my calendar real quick. And I have a couple of questions. I will get to them in a moment. I think I shot this on the 14th. Yeah. I don't know why I put two. <laughs> Four. Okay, so, and by the way, once I have a new computer, these live streams, I anticipate going much better. It's not just my computer slowing down, but for whatever reason, a few years ago, no matter what, like, I can't get decent internet speeds from this computer, no matter what, even if I plug it in directly. All right, questions, and then I'm going to call it. Okay, Schlankel Arts. Uh, not regarding not regarding the editing, no problem. I can ask it. Yeah, you can ask whatever. Um, I will shoot a music festival next week, which will include four days, three nights of shooting. Do you have any specific things to approach such a big project? Um, give me a more specific question, um, because I, I've shot some musical music festivals and shows, um, so I'll need a specific question, um, t so I can point you in the right direction. Uh, Christopher says extra memory cards and, and charge batteries. Yeah, that goes for most jobs. I mean, shooting on stage, I, I love, actually, I really enjoy concert photography to a degree. Not enough where I've ever pursued it as like a thing for me, meaning like something I was going to, to try to specialize in. But I do enjoy it. The lighting is always great and fun and dynamic. Um, some of my favorite shots on my portfolio, I think, honestly, might be from some concert photography. I wish... Let me see if I can pull up... Yeah, it'd be too inconvenient. But, like, I don't know if... I, I'm sure somewhere I made a special gallery of just those types of images. If you go to my website, though, it's not really something I feature. But, yeah, I really enjoy it. Are you going to be the house photographer? Because there's going to be a big difference between being house photographer um, and one of like you know 50 photographers on site working for different publications and that kind of thing. And then, like for example, when I was at Lollapalooza, every act had different rules. Some would be like you could you could you'd get 15 minutes in front of the pit, and then you'd have to clear out. Um, like Paul McCartney, you had to win a lottery, I think, or sign up in order to get him, um, which I think I did actually, but then I just didn't go. Um, I didn't need to cover him. So there's a lot of different rules that you should be aware of depending on, you know, who you're shooting for and all that. How is your workflow during the festival? I normally shoot a ton and try to sort the pics during my stay so I can see which angles, shots, etc. work out and which don't. I will be one of two photographers on site. I assume you mean as a house photographer then. And they don't have specific rules or anything like that. I'm free to roam around. Are they going to let you on stage? I mean, so if it were me, like, if I were shooting a concert, I would shoot it just like any event. I would get my establishing shots to show scale from both directions. I would try to get a wide I would try to get wide shots of the stage 
wide shots of the crowd. I would try to get shots that incorporate the crowd and the stage. I would try to get shots that incorporate the stage and the crowd, meaning I'll go behind the performers if I'm able to. I would try to do a dead center shot if I'm able to do that without being noticed. Obviously, you can't just walk across the stage. I would probably also do like three quarter shots from each corner of the stage, like right behind the curtain, for example, if there is one. I would then try to do my close ups of each musician. Obviously, special attention typically will be paid to the front person, the singer, that kind of thing. Um, I would do some interesting artistic shots as well, like shallow depth of field shots of behind. So actually in the gallery I just edited, there was a moment where a guy was um, making announcements to everyone. So I shot very shallow from behind. Um, you could do that. Uh, as far as lighting goes, you know, I think I used to do it in, in manual, but it's tricky because the light's going to be all over the place. And so that might not be best. I'm trying to remember how I typically do it. You can try both, see what works for you. And I can be on stage, but I would not try to be there too much. Yeah, of course, as it probably is distracting. Yeah, you don't want to be distracting. You don't want to, uh, you, you know what? If all your images are amazing and you do, you commit some sort of faux pas, <laughs> yeah, that might be enough for them to not invite you back. It's possible. Yeah. You know, human relationships are extremely important and a lot of people will hire you because they like you. Um, and if your work is amazing, you will likely be hired again, but it's not a guarantee. So, you know, I would, as far as like, logistics go as far as how often you're uploading and are you making selects and all of that that's going to depend on your client you know what while I'm talking give me a moment let me see if I can I think I have a hidden gallery on my website let me see if I can find it just bear with me for a minute talk amongst yourselves <laughs> I have posted some concert stuff to my Instagram, so that's an option if you want to see what I've done. Yeah, it's taking a long time just to load my website. One thing I would encourage you to do, um, and I encourage everyone to do this, don't just shoot what you need to shoot. Shoot what you want to shoot. Shoot what you want to incorporate into your portfolio. Shoot what you think will take you to the next step. Even if they're like, I don't need any portraits of performers, you are going to have access to these performers, hopefully. And getting some great candids, uh, I mean, great portraiture can go a long way. Um, I've done this with a lot of different jobs I've shot where they didn't require me to shoot a portrait, but I did. And those were great images for my portfolio. They were great experiences. I'm still looking. Okay, let me try this. Meanwhile, I have another question. Okay, that is very vague. How do you edit your images? Um, so I'm not sure what you mean other than Lightroom. Or do you mean like what my process is? Do you mean what am I typically changing? Um, another, qu okay. Oh, you're talking to me. I'm sorry. I don't have to edit the images instantly. I will edit them a few days after the event as they mainly are marketing for the next event. As far as I know, that's a relief for you. Thanks a lot for the sh shot list and tips. I gotta say, you seem like a really nice and genuine person. 
it's great to see here someone down to, to earth. Uh, yeah, it's lacking on YouTube, isn't it? I'm a big YouTube fan. Um, I don't just make content. I love to watch YouTube content. Um, but I, one thing I do not watch any of is photography content. I, if you, I could share it. I could share my, what the algorithms are feeding me and none of it is photography related. I've made sure of that. Just, it's just, I don't want to hear about why you're switching to Sony or any of that stuff. You know, it's not relevant. I'm not the target audience. Okay. So I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm looking up my, trying to find, um, a gallery I made somewhere on, um, of like a lot of freelance work I did of like concert photography. I know I have one. And then I can share that with you. Okay, I can't find it. Let me let me do a Lollapalooza gallery. I think I why isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Nothing's working for me today. Here, I found it. Okay, let me go into my streaming software and then try to see if I can share my Chrome. Okay, let me see if they show up. Okay, almost there. So I think I just have to do a full screen share, so give me one moment. Okay, so here are some like Lollapalooza selects. This is from years ago. It might have been like 2014 or something. Um, I just have to open the studio app so I can see what people are commenting. Is there a slideshow option? Here we go. But now I can't see the comments, so that's the problem. So let me see if I can do it in um, the actual YouTube app on my phone. But these are some selects. I did some crowd work. I'm probably a much better photographer at this point. So that's the problem. Um, okay, so I'm looking at the YouTube app off my phone. Um... No further comments, so that's fine. I'll, I'll let the slideshow run, and then I will. Uh, I'll call. I'll call it. Um, not even fully uploading. Yeah, that's not. It, my computer is garbage, so it's not going to work. Um, it looks like it's taking really long just to load a slideshow on, on Smug Mug. So that's it for today, I guess. Um, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I've got the new content dropping really soon. Um, if possible, the next one, if I it's done filming, I just might want to tweak my thumbnails and whatnot. Uh, but I hopefully will be doing one on the 
event photography career is sort of a pathway to follow your early, mid, and late career. It's already filmed, it's ready to go, as well as other videos, and then I have a whole bunch in my head that I want to do. But unfortunately, I am shooting a job on Thursday, and then Saturday through Wednesday, I have five 10-hour photography jobs back-to-back. -back. So it's going to be a crazy week, but the new content will come because it's already filmed. Um, and I'm really excited. Uh, I've been super productive lately. I feel like I've figured out how to do that, how to finally get some balance and productivity.